Well, I was very blessed to have one year with Yaz, his last year, my first year with the Red Sox. And he was very good to me. I sat with him on buses, in those days just one bus. Uh, on occasion, I'd be with him, and uh, he one-on-one -on -one was very good. He was very quiet in a group setting, but the one-on-one, -on -one, he was excellent. I learned a lot of baseball. I remember on his birthday, his 44th birthday, he ripped a double against Toronto down the right field line to win the game. And uh, that was really special to do it at that age. The last weekend was amazing. They had two days of, of tributes to Carl Yastrzemski at Fedway. And uh, it was more or less uh, out of character for him. But after both games, he circled the field. He ran around the warning track, reached out and touched as many fans as he could all the way around the ballpark. And, uh, you know, Yaz was a guy that uh, was somewhat reclusive, but in this case, he was very open and wanted to show his love to the fans in New England. In fact, I believe uh, his uh, final words to the groups both days, New England, I love you. I first met Dennis Eckersley when he was 20 years old pitching for the Cleveland Indians. I was doing television uh, on a commercial station, the weekend sports anchor and sports reporter, and I met the Eck, and uh, he had great command even as a 20-year-old. Uh, and he also knew he was good at the time, and Frank Robinson was his manager, he loved him. Uh, then when I went to uh, Boston, Eck pitched the first game uh, I ever did. As a Cleveland Indians broadcaster, he beat Rick Wise, for whom he'd been traded, opening day of 1979. And then when I get to Boston, Eck pitches the first game of my Red Sox career and loses to Toronto. The year before, he had made a statement in true Eck fashion, what's a Rance Mullenix? Well, Rance Mullenix took him in the bullpen that game. But he's become a lifelong friend, uh, the most honest guy you'd ever be around, direct to the point, and a uh, very warm individual. That has a great career as a broadcaster. Loves the game so much. I think that's why he was a great broadcaster because he prepared so much and it was a labor of love for him. And of course, his own inimitable language. That pitch had hair on it. <laughs> well, Wade Boggs was the best two strike hitter I've ever seen. He could foul off a tough pitch and keep falling off balls until he got one he liked and drove it. Uh, I kept the stat walls off the left field wall and he led every year with at least 25 balls off the left field wall. Uh, Fenway Park was really made for Wade Boggs. I kept stats that I put uh, in my scorebook pop-up PO and uh, caught by a player and uh, I gave Wade a stat in 1985 where he had his highest batting average that he never popped to an infielder until late August of that year. I believe he only had two pop-ups to an infielder all season. And he really loved that stat. He literally hit the ball out of the catcher's mid, it seemed. It seemed like he could get hit whatever he wanted to. And uh, he worked so hard at it. We also saw him take 100 ground balls every day from Johnny Pesky. He made himself a uh, gold glove caliber third baseman. Talented, but also worked so hard. And I think that's why uh, he's here, 328 lifetime average. I think I traveled with Jim Rice more than any other person in uniform as a player and as a hitting coach. Very stoic guy, uh, very strong, very much a team player. Uh, always went to the post. He didn't have, he had nagging injuries, he played through them. He was uh, just a strong leader in so many ways. Tremendous power, uh, hitting the ball the opposite field with a nice short stroke. He said that he never considered himself a home run hitter. He was both a home run hitter and a great hitter, and uh, made himself a very good left fielder. Led the league in assists one year because he was so accurate with his throwing, knew how to play the wall, and uh, work on that uh, aspect of throwing, which you don't see a lot of players do these days. And a very stoic guy, just uh, a lot of fun to be around him. Pedro Martinez and Roger Clemens are the greatest pitchers I've ever been around. Pedro was the most charismatic athlete experienced. He had a wonderful personality, he liked to have fun, uh, very serious on the mound. It was his his domain and hitter better not get too comfortable. But just a tremendous uh, charisma He and great intelligence. He could read batter swings. He knew how to attack hitters. He had four great pitches. I mean all top quality pitches and he had a showmanship about him. 
Uh, one of the greatest games I ever saw was when he got hurt. Game five of the division series against Cleveland at their murderer's row. And he came out of the bullpen. He had a back injury that hurt him in the first game. He was throwing only 91 or 92, but pitched the six no-hit innings. And when he started to warm up in the bullpen in right field at Van Jacobs Field, there was a hush over the crowd. I think they had a sense if he came in, their team was going to lose. And that's exactly what happened. Even not at 100%, he pitched six no-hit innings. There were so many great games. Of course, they won in Yankee Stadium September 10th, 1999. He strikes out 17 Yankees. Total command, gave up one hit a home run of Joey Davis. Otherwise, he was perfect. Now, Poppy, one of a kind, a tremendous personality, and the greatest clutch hitter, I think, of all time. The way he performed with the game on the line was amazing. I think two things added to that. First, great knowledge of the strike zone. He really had tremendous knowledge and didn't chase bad pitches. That helped him with the game on the line. The other thing is personality. So loose, so confident, that I think he didn't get uptight in the big moments, and that's why he was able to produce in so many ways. But a great personality on and off the field, so warm, so welcoming. I mean, I brought my grandchildren around him, and he, big smile, said, let's take a picture. And he was always so willing uh, to do those type of things. And of course, we'll all remember his amazing speech right after the Boston Marathon bombing when the Red Sox uh, came back on the field on that Saturday afternoon uh, that inspired, I think, an entire Red Sox nation. And you just hope that he'd be the guy coming to the plate with a game on the line. One of the biggest home runs I've ever seen, the grand slam of uh, Benoit against the Tigers in the ALCS. Because the Tigers had a much stronger team, they really should have won it all, but the Red Sox had Boston Strong going that year, and Mr. Boston Strong himself.